Hey guys, Lissy's here. Before we click away, I wanted to quickly explain what the video is. Um, it's called Explain That Photograph, and it's going to be a series of interviews or maybe like a podcasty thing, I'm not too sure. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to interview and talk to amazing photographers and dive deep into more of their iconic e photographs. Because this was the first episode, I'm sorry, maybe the quality isn't as amazing as I hoped it would be, um, but I'm still learning and this was a very steep learning curve for me. So, well, I hope to improve by next time. So yeah, um, hope you guys enjoy the video. The first guest is someone that most of you may already know, uh, but I'm very happy that he's on and let's just get on to the video. <laughs> so today we have um, Samuel Street Life. You guys probably never heard of him. He has a small YouTube channel. Um, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Give me likes and subs, please. So, okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Samuel. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you, man? Uh, I, I missed this awkwardness between us. Is it between record. us or is it just because of my, it's just because of me? No, because of... We, we, Okay, maybe people don't know how, how, how long it took us to, to make this work, but I think it's like almost an hour. So we've been talking for a while and now uh, we finally can start. So, so let so, me know if you want to start over. <laughs> I don't think worry, it was um, good. I think it was good too. So, okay, so, so this video, I actually have an agenda for this video. Um, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. But yeah, so, so I want, I'm starting this new thing called explain that photograph title to be, I don't know, I don't know, thought of later, but explain um, yourself. Yeah. 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 So, so, so what I want to do here is interview actual good photographers and talk about maybe one of their more iconic ish photographs and, um, and Sign that's it. Up. <laughs> yeah. I'll sign you up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and you have been signed up because your photograph um, was chosen for a finalist for um, Italian Street Photography Festival, was it? Yeah, Recently. one of many. I don't know how many, 50 or so. It was a lot, but still, oh, congrats. Yeah. Man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, thanks. First time ever getting somewhere with my photos. <laughs> that's super cool, man. I'm, I'm really happy yeah. for you. Yeah, so, so what I want to do in this um, bit, let's call it, is, yeah, I just want to dive deep into one photograph. So in this case, it'll be the photograph that was chosen um, for ISPF. But also, now I don't know which, which way I should look. Should I look at there or should I look at you? you know? But um, yeah, I want to dive uh, deep into that. And then we can kind of derail from there. But I have a few questions ready, so okay, yeah, um, and I think the awkward thing about doing this with you is um, I'm not sure if you need an introduction or not. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I guess you, you can... chose me for a reason because you know you you can't fuck up too much. <laughs> no, I, no, no, would... no. It's it's because uh, it's because. I, first of all, I am definitely comfortable with you, but because, yeah, you had a good photograph um, and you're, you're good at taking photos. So I thought it'd be cool. Um, but yeah, so, so if you can just briefly, I guess, introduce yourself for the potential 3% okay. of my audience that doesn't know who you are, then yeah. Okay. This gives me a good uh, way to practice it because this doesn't happen a lot. So I'm, first of all, excited to be on Ulysses' channel. Um, <laughs> It's, yeah, it's rare that I am on other channels, so it feels right, nice. Right, right, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yeah, my name is Samuel uh, Lentaro. I'm, how do I say this? I'm half Japanese, I'm half German. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, Samuel Street Life. I do street photography, but I'm not, I don't want to limit myself to only street. So I call mm -hmm. myself a photographer and filmmaker. Whenever you see a bio, um, what else can I say? I live in Hamburg, Germany, and uh, I I don't know what I wanted to say. <laughs> Maybe I wanted to say I am in Japan a lot, so Ulysses and I know each other because we met in Japan. Uh, we did workshops together, and yeah. 
and it was and cool. Was something. And I recommend the Ricoh GR3 for everyone <laughs> who is <laughs> not sure what camera to get. Thanks, so. Samuel. I'm not posting any affiliate links on this video. Don't so. worry, I will post them as a comment. <laughs> or I'll post them to my Amazon associates oh, so I can that, get... <laughs> that's clever, yeah. We should do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so <clears throat> so there's a specific photograph exactly that I wanted to talk about, and it's this photograph which will magically appear appear in my screen somewhere. The power um, of Premiere <clears throat> Pro. Well, Da Vinci. Which is oh, okay. <laughs> freer, but a little bit worse. Yeah, in my opinion. But oh well. Yes. So 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 I want to talk about talk about that photo or this photo, mm. um, and I guess without me trying to decipher it too much maybe just oh, that would I'll, be fun though i'll just have you talk about it first okay. but um yeah so so obviously on instagram i i saw this photo and i think i saw it on your video one of your videos first mm. and i was like this is a nice photo and um and on instagram yeah you can see it, where it was taken in all of that, but if you can kind of explain where it was taken and what mm -hmm. you know, what time of day was taken. Yeah, yeah, that's very important for mm. this photograph. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this one uh, I took this in November last year in London uh, when I was there for like a week uh, to film for my GR project. And uh, shout outs to uh, my homies in London, Leo, J Rose. Uh, well, who else was there? Christian Cross, fellow GR shooter. And uh, John was also there. Uh, I'm, I'm having a blackout right now. I, I don't remember the names all. Um, but yeah, so we went out one morning to go to Hyde Park. Mm. So this is um, a park in, in London. And it was, I think, 7 a.m. in the morning. And we went there because Christian told us uh, the day before that there are these people who who swim, uh, you know, in, 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 do you call it a river or lake? Some body it's of water, yes. Some body of water, yeah. So they go swim there and it's it was like minus four or five degrees Celsius. Celsius. Yeah. And we were like, oh, this is crazy. And then he showed us his photos and it looked mm -hmm. very cool because mm -hmm. it was, you know, foggy, oh, had a nice cool. mood. Yeah. And we were like, oh, yeah, let's definitely do that. But for, for me, it meant that I had only two hours of sleep because it was already 11 p.m. when we decided to go there and then one hour drive back to the place I was staying. But I'm so glad I went uh, because of this photo, obviously. So yeah, we got there and there there were there were no one swimming. And we were like, oh no, maybe it's the wrong day. So we had to wait for like half an hour. And then a few people showed up or just one person. Then they, you know, they were swimming a little bit and then they uh went away. Um so but after a while more and more people came, and what they do is they slide down this um Mm. Uh, they are not stairs but it's like very slippery so they slide into the water like very mm. cool and this photograph here was 80 percent um luck i would say and 20 percent skill because mm. i didn't know this i didn't see this guy coming i was you know concentrated oh, on first of all i was chatting yeah i was chatting with uh leo probably and at the same time, of course, my street photography eyes always looking. <laughs> so I saw the three in the, uh, in the water already. And they were like, you know, taking photos of themselves. And I was like, oh, it's kind of a lovely scene. But it didn't make me take a photo. And then mm. suddenly I, I heard like someone running. And he started to, to slide down this, um, this path into the water. Mm -hmm. And I was like, just taking two photos. And this was the first one because the GR is not fast enough to to do burst here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what? Usually, when I see someone doing something dynamic, my first intuition would be to you know go lower and make it more dynamic mm. and have you know the subject be 
like yeah very dynamic and try different perspectives mm -hmm. and this is kind of a boring perspective it's like my my uh my, it's my eye level. Eyes. yeah it's on eye level i look down <clears throat> but i'm glad i took it this uh way because uh, otherwise the, the rails would be blocking something in the frame true, and true. The, the the environment like the the background uh, I like that we see like these two little houses in the background and we kind of see where this is and the action is still visible but it's not only about um, you know the action it's more about the scene in general and I didn't see this but the this, the this swan like putting its head under the water it was like a surprising bonus I didn't see that so I was just taking the photo I wasn't even sure if I got it. But I felt like I had a nice moment, but only after seeing the photo, I realized that the elements kind of came together. And I have one more frame where he is uh, like maybe 20, 30 centimeters um, uh, more towards the water. Mm -hmm. Hard to say. And then he's almost touching the, the woman's hand in the mm -hmm. frame and it doesn't work anymore. So it was kind of a lucky shot, and thankfully my this is you know no advert. I don't want to advertise the GR three here, but the startup time is so much faster than the GR two, so mm. that helped. My camera was turned off. Oh, so I heard. Off. Okay. Yeah, I heard this guy running, and I just turned it on and took a photo immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, this could be a good point saying that uh, it's best to have the camera always set to uh, settings that can work and like a low light environment, uh, like, you know, like F4 is usually something that works everywhere. In many cases, and, yeah. Yeah, and then I think I was, I had uh, auto ISO set and shutter speed was probably 250 or so, I don't know. Um, so I'm, from a technical standpoint, my camera was ready. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, we we hang out there for like two hours. Oh, okay, that's and a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, besides people just swimming, laughing when they go into the water, you know, oh, it's cold. And some people are like, we're very pro, they don't care. And some people tried it out for the first time, so that was fun to uh, to witness. But nothing really happened that was like super exciting for a photograph. Mm. And this is the only moment I think that for me, um, describes, you know, what, what's going on there uh, in London during winter in 7 a.m. in the morning. That's, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, thanks. Thanks for all that info. You answered like a bunch of the questions I had. But yeah, <laughs> okay. I mean, it must be really cold. It's, it was really cold. <laughs> it must be really cold. Yeah, but they yeah, were yeah. so happy. It was, it was, we were tempted to try it out ourselves. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, that's. That's yeah. such a good lesson, I guess. I mean, because like, mm. yeah, the mornings are such a nice time to shoot, but yeah. especially in, you know, in winter it's cold, but in summer the the, the days are sh like much longer. So you got to wake up much earlier mm. and there's all these like, at least I, I'm not a very good morning person. So I always have to fight myself to try to wake up mm. early and try to get up, yeah. and, you know. Uh, take photos in the morning but I guess when you get a photo like this and it has some results then it's like okay maybe I should do this a little bit more often right exactly yeah <laughs> actually uh, yeah I forgot to mention this but yeah so this was in London and mm. have you have you been there before or was this first time uh, not not to this park I've been to mm. London a few times but not to Hyde Park mm -hmm. it was the first time yeah okay. without any locals I would probably never find out about True. this yeah. yeah that's interesting because you know how you know there's there's a certain number of people that would say you can only get quote unquote like good enough photos if you're shooting somewhere where you're what would you say where you know well um or mm. you know like if you I, I have a few guys around me that say like if you're shooting in like a country that you're not too what would you say if you don't know your way around too much, then all you're taking is like a bunch of tourist shots. Yeah, um, right. But it's funny how you just 
snatch this <laughs> i guess yeah in a way i, mean, I yeah, guess yeah. i guess i'm i'm very lucky because i was you know around with locals and they knew but even then they they didn't know that this is happening mm -hmm, on a mm -hmm. regular basis oh. because one one of them found out mm -hmm. and then he told all of his friends mm -hmm. and now you know after that you know many other photographers went to this place mm -hmm. uh and so yeah i was surprised that even locals didn't know about uh, this Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, if if I would be on my own, I would probably never find uh, find this. Yeah, yeah. This is. I think this is yeah. a really good example of. Uh, sometimes when you shoot things like events or mm. like let's say like a protest or like a ceremony or something, the photographs turn out to be like just kind of like a repetage or turn out to be just. You know, it's a photo of like a carnival or something, and it's mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. you know, if if you know if you know what's happening, oh, you know, the best example, like the the thing in uh, the in the India, the, the paint thing. What was it called? The uh, ah, the ho holy 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 yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. How like they look amazing, but mm. like it's a holy photo. Do you know what I mean? Yeah um, yeah. But I think this is a good example of how if you take a photo kind of well enough or kind of discreet enough in a way without kind of without kind of showing that super touristy aspect of it then it's still a good photo i think um yeah i think it's a little bit hard to explain but th i think there's a good mm -hmm. there's like a very thin boundary between w what it what ends up being like a event photo but this is totally just like a good photo in general mm -hmm. yeah 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 so, yeah this is it's hard to take an interesting photo of something that um is new uh, to you, i guess new yeah that as well because you get it's like you you grab for the low-hanging fruits you know the <laughs> obvious yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. subjects you're like when you go to venice and there's the carnival you're like oh people wearing masks I yeah will take photos of people wearing <laughs> fancy masks uh so that is but w if you don't if if you experience it for yourself the first time then of course you're drawn to exotic things mm. uh, I, i'm i'm sure people in japan they you know of course they're after the geishas in kyoto or mm. stuff like that but if you already know about um like if you already um so you take these photos but then you have to move on and find a different way or try to look at it from a more uh objective mm. view you know you, you you see something that is working for a photograph and you're like oh i gotta take it mm -hmm. and not saying that you only take photos for likes but i think people generally hunt for uh like photos that impress mm -hmm. or yeah yeah uh, yeah i agree yeah. With that. yeah yeah and what what impresses us like the first impression is always very visual and then the content but getting this like multi-layered is, is mm -hmm. very difficult and i think most people just see something take some photos and move on mm -hmm. but if you stay for example here in this scene if we just stayed there for like a half an hour or maybe even an hour took a few snapshots and moved on we would, would have missed uh, this photograph, for example. True, uh, true, true, true. Okay, okay. So, so this also I wanted to say. So this photo is in um, black and white, yep. and I guess kind of start unedited. To... Ooh, oh, oh, <laughs> Rico yeah, monotone. Oh, really? Picture oh, shit. profile. Shit. Okay, yeah, so yeah, this is like, JPEG. This is JPEG. <laughs> Holy shit! Because I can't get the raw file to look like. As the good JPEG uh, film. I have tried it, you know, using silver effects with fancy techniques, mm -hmm. and it always looks a little bit wrong. I don't know. Yeah. I like the mood of this the best. I agree. Yeah. No, this looks very natural. Because it is flat. It is not like punchy. True. And I I made it like very contrasty and punchy once. It didn't work as well. Mm -hmm. I but this it's still, is how it, mm. it still has enough like richness to it though like if you mm. sorry to, totally nerding out here but if you look at you know 
the 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 rails on the very bottom touching you know the water and oh, you see yeah. like there are like like close to true blacks but there's yeah. still detail in them and if you look at you know the guy with the hands like this mm. um and his boxers or whatever the fuck you can call them um then yeah. you know they're like very close to true black so there the, the thing is there is contrast but just like it's like just enough which um yeah yeah it's very hard to replicate yeah because there isn't more than that the rest is all in this you know Great. fogginess and yeah yeah but that yeah. is a good point for for black and white photography right like um uh, using the the zone system like mm -hmm. having a, as many layers of of the grayscale as possible mm -hmm. um so there is there's true black and also true white but in between it's just not a lot uh, of layers yeah and that is because the scene uh was yeah covered with this uh, fog mm -hmm. yeah the fog is yeah. always a nice touch isn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no no so i think yeah this photo really reminded me of someone like uh richard calvar calvar oh uh, yeah 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 and uh definitely like his black and white tones too are lean towards more i guess lower contrast i guess in a mm -hmm. way yeah um and the moment is kind of like something that i mean he might get a little bit closer but it's something mm. that i could definitely see that mm. he might take and he might like yeah 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 yeah, yeah i mm. tend to also like um a lot of dynamic range in black and white mm -hmm. um i i also uh enjoy you know alan Schaller's high contrast black and white photos those are very tempting aren't they <laughs> yeah, they're very sexy, <laughs> schmexy, yeah. tasty. Uh, but I, if I, for example, if I scan uh, my my black and white negatives, I always go for a similar look, like this photo. Mm -hmm. um, lots of dynamic range, and um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It, maybe the older you get, the more le the less contrast <laughs> you need. I don't uh -huh. know. <laughs> weird for statement. some hundred year old photographer and look at his photos and yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay no that's cool so i wanted to kind of i guess like a little bit derail in a mm -hmm. way but so black and white and i, I guess oh. when i when i met you or you know until like last year or so i saw a lot of color photos and yeah. you just mentioned that um I mean, I think you've been shooting a lot of different stuff now. Like you shoot on film too, um, mm. but also, you know, as you said, you had your GR on black and white JPEG setting, which means that you just don't, you know, get color anymore. So mm. I kind of know this story, but um, what mm, happened yeah. to your color stuff? <laughs> <laughs> There's no color in my life anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I always... Uh, really enjoyed shooting color and black and white uh i feel like i yeah I, I feel comfortable shooting both um but this year i made a decision i think i told you that uh yeah 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 in january january even i decided to just shoot black and white for one year because when i looked back to the photographs i did last year and also the years before the ones that really that I really like or think that are interesting enough tend to be my black and white photos, mm. and the color ones they for me they felt more like nice snapshots. I still of course I'm the, my biggest fan of course, I love my work <laughs> I mean every photographer should should uh, love their work, but um yeah, but I started seeing like patterns, and when I shoot black and white, I tend to focus more on um what's in the frame what the context is um mm -hmm. i know that you shoot a lot of color and uh, we we nerd out about color also a lot and there's a lot about color that is very um, it's you know once you see color like for example i shoot black and white using a filter so mm -hmm. that i don't even see a preview but once i upload my raws into a lightroom <laughs> I always yeah, yeah, see yeah. the color version. And then I'm like, ah, this mm. looks, you know, new to me now. And it's, I'm not, you know, when I should film black and white, if for HP5, I just scan it, it's black and white. I don't know what I missed. But when I shoot raw, digital, 
I see, you know, the color version. But I have to say for the photos that are working very well for me, when I see the color version, I was, I'm like, yep, it doesn't work in color. And this is also because I think he's wearing like a blue or green um, cover yeah. for his head. Mm. And it, it, it just feels weird. And then his skin color is like very magenta. Or like, I don't know, it's mm. weird. So when I, I tend to take photos that doesn't work in color anymore. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I try to shoot black and white this year um, just to, to see if I can, you know, stick with shooting black and white, mm -hmm. if I will feel limited or not. And, you know, there are so many uh, photographers who, who never shoot color and they are fine with not shooting color. And, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's weird. Like, how can you be fine not shooting color? It, it didn't, I, do, I cannot understand this. <laughs> I'm starting, I'm starting yeah. to see why. Mm. And yeah, even if I go back to color after a year, um, at least I can say that I tried it and hopefully I learned something and I will probably make a video sharing the experience. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Um, yeah. yeah, but I have to say I, I really hated it the first two or three months because then, yeah, it's, you always see something nice in color because your eyes are used color. to it yeah 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 definitely yeah and i think when you listen to i think it was Meyerwitz, but also some other color shooters they tend to say um you know why shouldn't i document uh life in color um because life is in color mm. you know but then there are people who shoot black and white and say maybe i don't want to show you real life maybe i want to show you something that is related to real life but has its own um language or its own universe you know like i think fun ho said he doesn't want to take uh photographs like he doesn't want to take photographs that remind him of real life mm -hmm. he 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 wants uh, he shoots black and white to escape from mm -hmm. real life so I think they're, you know, not to, to say what's better, um, color or black and white, but I think they're good, valid reason to choose uh, one or the other. Mm -hmm. But for now, I'm sticking to black and white. Interesting. Well, I guess that at least that means that um, there is like a world where you see in specific ways. Like if you, mm. as you said, the first two or three months were kind of ugh, but when you get used to it, as you said, like you're taking this photo of, you know, the, the, the man going into a body of water. Um, mm. And then you, as you said, like you said that, you know, his skin tones were kind of magenta -y and you didn't like the color. Um, but that also means that you, as you were taking it, you kind of noticed that it might work in black and white. Right. I guess. I, I, but mm. I don't know. I don't know. But, but that means. I guess um, because it was a foggy day and. I knew it would look good in black and white. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Not to to brag, but I see. Yeah. I tend to take photos in in foggy weather because mm -hmm. in black and white it really works. Yeah. So it definitely helps shooting, uh, you know, in, in fog or mist. Yeah. In black and white, and it, it's especially hard when you have lots of contrast. Mm. Um, I mean, usually contrast is a good thing, but um, I mean, we did a workshop, you know, talking about chaos uh, in street photography and you have color noise but you also have noise uh contrast noise in black and white mm -hmm. and having like fork in the scene eliminates that uh which is which can help a lot so i yeah i i don't really understand why people in japan shoot black and white but it's probably because of the color noise at yeah. the same time they have also other you know it becomes a different kind of noise. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, and, um, mm, mm. I, I think, uh, Tatsu Suzuki and Ash, Ashley, Ashina, they both told me that, yeah, they just colors very, just bad in Tokyo. <laughs> and they said it's just noise. So that's why they shoot black and white. Yeah. 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 I, I, I do. I think yeah, it was them that said that. Yeah. It was both, both of them that said that. And I agree. Yeah, it's very noisy sometimes. Yeah. 
But you you are good at example that uh, also can work. Mm. So color is not. If you are smart about it, I think it it's, it can can definitely work. It's it's. But, yeah. I'll be honest. It's rough, man. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, yeah, rough. Yeah. yeah, I got really used to it, but still, it's kind of like. Yeah, I mean, if you would live in in Cuba, or, you know, color Morocco would be, or you know, something. yeah. I think uh, it's rare in Japan that you have like uh, even surfaces and blocks of one color. You always have. I mean, just look at a like a convenience store, like from the outside. It's like boom, boom, boom. Always this text, 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 and yeah, all yeah. these colors and Akihabara. And, oh. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Yeah. Well, let's not make this my therapy session. And um... <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, that's really cool. I think we've got to we got we got to talk a lot about a lot of interesting things. Um, any... You definitely can change the way you look for photographs when you decide to shoot color or black and white. Because yeah. when you don't take um, either, yeah, well, how do you say? If you don't uh, pay attention to colors mm -hmm. around you, you are also not getting distracted by them. You see someone on a yellow dress and a nice blue background when you shoot black and white you know it's going to suck in color uh, black and white mm -hmm. it will be it will be just about wo a woman in a dress mm -hmm. but that's it so it's maybe not enough so yeah in black and white you have to look at um contrast you because when you convert a color in black and white this is also a skill i try to to learn is to see uh colors in terms of um tones I guess the advice here would be try to be able to see in at least either, I guess. Yeah. You can you say yeah. that uh, shooting black and white is easier because you don't have to think about color. So I think for beginners, they, they see street photography, most of them do, do it in black and white. So they mm -hmm. also do it in black and white. But I think this it, it's a good advice for someone uh, to focus on color as you know, some uh, like important element in their photography because it makes you so much more sensitive to to what's mm. going on. And uh, yeah, I think shooting black and white is like the easy the easy path, but shooting great black and white is mm. very hard. And I think if you shoot color a lot, you are prob you, it's probably more likely to shoot also great black and white later. It's my theory because interesting if you just shoot black and white from the beginning i think you mm, i mean of course it's doable but i think it, you learn a lot by shooting color for black and white interesting yeah i guess in a way it kind of like spoils you into not seeing the world in color mm. but going back to what you said i mean there's no color in black and white but still the colors have shades to them and they create different types of contrast um, and I think when you, when, the more you get better at color, the more you become very keen of contrast, I think. So that's probably one big factor that um, plays a big role in black and white stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. One, I get, okay. One last, just last bit then. Um, oh, when, okay. When you, so, so when you i guess select photos and send them to you know like a competition or something like this um you're you're choosing the you know these photos either through feeling intuitively or or you just know it works or something and um i was i was sorry i was looking through um instagram on my on my computer and i didn't know but they still have the like feed and then i could see the number of likes photographs have on, on the computer mm. version of instagram i didn't know this but um as yeah. i was looking i'm sorry if i'm being too nosy here but i saw that <laughs> the photo that actually won the, the icpf yeah. didn't actually have as many likes as some other photos that you have mm. so i don't uh, to be honest i don't i don't that's not something i care about but mm. what might be interesting is was because you can see the number of likes 
um, from your standpoint, like I like people mm -hmm. in public can't see. But so so was there? Why did you? I guess why did you choose this photo um, compared to you know something that you thought did much better on Instagram or something? You know, I mean, this is a question that I wouldn't ask, but I think a lot of people <laughs> might be interested in in the answer to this. Um, yeah, I guess. I can give you a short answer because um, when I send photos for competition, I try to only focus on what I feel is right, or like what is what I feel is a good photograph. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you can look at likes and um, decide on on based on that if your photograph is good or not. Uh, at the end real photographers will i mean that sounds kind of cocky real photographers like you're not a real photographer no but i mean for, for photographers who are experienced yeah. looking at a lot of work they will look at your work and not usually people on instagram who follow you you know random people yeah your friends but also other people who you, you don't know mm -hmm. and so yeah maybe the general public liked one of your photos a lot because it was i don't know eye-catching mm. but uh someone who judges your photos in the competition they look for more um, they also tend to spend more time on your photograph uh, at least a little bit more time than yeah, people a little on instagram. Bit more. Yeah, just a little I, more. I've, <laughs> I've been a, a judge once in uh, in an online um, competition and uh, you don't spend that much time on a photo because there are so many Mm -hmm. but you try to really think about each photo and on instagram you just see it and you're like oh like it like it like mm -hmm. it and you hit like but you don't go beyond that maybe you post a comment but so yeah i just chose a photo that i personally liked i think mm -hmm. it was my personally my favorite photo from last year so mm -hmm. i thought okay my best chance would be this one the rest mm -hmm. probably not and yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert in competitions. Uh, I participate sometimes. I think I will stop doing it because I wasted um, too much money. It costs uh, so much fucking money. Yeah. yeah, it's. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I, yeah. I. I'm not I think I will there. only enter when it's when it's free. Yeah, it's gonna <laughs> stop there maybe. But yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say that it's more. A little bit more personal and then obviously it's as you said a good photograph a good image that does well on instagram doesn't necessarily mean that it's you know a good yeah photograph you from want a, from a on photographic standpoint yeah yeah and you definitely want uh feedback uh on photos you personally feel are your photographs if you send in a photo that people liked on instagram then you think, oh, I maybe I have a chance, but um, is it really you, mm. or is it a photograph that you probably don't like as much, but the rest does? So if you want to know like where you stand, I think the best is to always go for photos you personally like. Um, yeah, it's, Instagram is not good. Don't don't look at Instagram. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. It's a trap, everyone. It is a trap. Delete your think. account. Yeah, I, it's a good it's a good learning. Um, if if you're, I think yeah. if you're critical enough, it's it's good to be on it and you know see what other photographers are kind of up to, maybe. Yeah. But you know, thinking that good photography is about what does well on Instagram is very dangerous, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thanks, Samuel, for all that. That was, you, you really, <laughs> oh shit. Okay. <laughs> you really dug deep into the photo and I was, that was great actually. Cause I feel like sometimes, so. <laughs> yeah. Cause I feel like um, sometimes, you know, photographs can be explained so much more. And um, obviously, yeah. Instagram being the main platform right now and, not that not that it's a terrible thing, but you know, it's as you said, you just kind of flick through photos. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
sorry, go on. I, I'm but, tend but, to interrupt but, you. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, some you know, sometimes photos, there's so much behind it. And um, if you dig deep in, enough into one, I feel like you can learn so much about that photographer. Mm. And yeah, so I learned a lot too. And I just wanted to make this video as kind of like a ode to um, a good photograph that you made. So yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> no, you know, I have to say, I, I think this is a very good format because, um, uh, for example, in, on Instagram this week, everyone was posting these Black Lives Matter protest photos. And I also shot uh, a protest on Saturday, but I, it was on film and I'm still scanning it. So I can't post them. Maybe I will post them next week. But I saw them like posting and posting and posting and sometimes mm -hmm. even like a gallery of five, ten photos. And then I felt like, what are we doing with these photos? Like we're just <laughs> smashing them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. No one is really taking a deep look. And most of them are just, you know, signs and people sh screaming. And I felt a little bit, yeah, like sad that, you know, we don't really take our time and try to connect with the photograph, analyze it, and we just see it and then swipe down or up and, you know, go to the next one. It's like really sad. <laughs> it's sad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the, yeah. It's just sad because, you know, you can take a whopping ass photograph and then, but it's still, it, it's, it shares the same screen time or the same attention as some shitty photograph that you took of some protest that you went to, or, you know, some photo that I took on my iPhone without any thought or anything. And they just share the same grid on the yeah. same algorithm, algorithm. Right. So yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 I think yeah, uh, looking forward to, to all your next guests. Yeah. I have um, some, I haven't, I haven't really spoken to any of them, but I have some really good people that I can uh, talk to, I think. So. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thanks, man. Thank you. All I'll right. Talk yeah. to you soon, anyways. I think. So. Yep. <laughs> Sayonara. Okay. 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 Sayonara. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tschüss. Bye. Bye. -bye.